Welcome to Body Work. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Body Work Boxing. I'm going to get straight to it and I'm going to be real deliberate about this. And I'm in this video, I'm going to talk about how Hall of Famer, all due respect, Tim Bradley finally exposed himself. Yeah. And I hate to be the one to point this out, but somebody has to do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this this might not get many likes. It definitely not gonna get many subscribers because it's, it sounds like disrespect. But I, I want to point something out. Last night, I'm gonna tell you who the biggest winner was last night. It was Earl, the Truth, Spence Jr. You know what I'm saying? One of the body work kings. And I'm gonna tell you why. You know, just like when I saw Jamel Charlo and Canelo in the ring, I know my fighter. I know Jamel Charlo. I know what he capable of. Last night when I seen Shakur, I know my fighter. I know what he capable of. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the people that I check for, I know Tank. Like, I, I know when he get in the ring, I know when I'm looking at what, what's going on. Like, everybody that I rock with, I know what's going on. Statistics, style, adjustments all of those things i know what's going on and as an earl spence jr fan i knew that that night before they even stepped in the ring something was wrong with earl spence you know i also know how to like you know when i, if I know how to support my fighter if my fight if my fighter is, is is silent i'm not gonna go out there and make up no narrative and create this hoopla and just drag you know his op through the mud and i'm not gonna do that if it's something out there and it has legs and the legs have hair and you know I got I, I sent it off to the lab to make sure that it was real, then I could talk about it. But it's always gonna be responsible. But part of this channel is silence is consent. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that if you don't say anything about it, you're agreeing. But I wanna show you, I wanna actually expose you are the viewers to this channel and welcome back if you tune in welcome back if you hit that like button welcome back if you comment or share this video welcome back if you rock with me you know what i'm saying update your notification but if you're here and you're listening to this now you need to understand this we have company men and then we have individuals and a lot of the time, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, we all find ourselves being company men. And Tim Bradley is a company man. You know, I don't, I'm not sure what Andre Ward got going on and whatever, you know what I'm saying? But he's no longer up there with ESPN. So as far as that company, he's not a company man. If you notice, it was a different with, with Teddy Atlas once Teddy Atlas was no longer affiliated with them folks, Teddy Atlas started speaking different. He often says that it was his outspokenness and his willingness to actually state the facts and tell the truth that actually led to his relationship with them same people that Tim Bradley is in bed with to curtail, to come to an end. And he talks about it every now and again when he starts getting passionate about whatever and he starts going back down memory lane and he'll tell it. But right now, Tim Bradley is a company man. And before people think that I'm going off disrespecting Tim Bradley, I want to say this. Shakur is one of my fighters. You know what I'm saying? I think that Shakur can probably beat a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, it's not many people that I think can really give. Now, some people I think can give Shakur a run for their money. You know what I'm saying? Only person that I undoubtedly know is probably Tank. And I say that every day, all day, and people that ride for these different fighters. Until my fighter go up against your fighter, what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Because you can be a fan of multiple fighters. This is not a boxing monogamous channel. Okay? All right? We don't believe in boxing monogamy. We support all of the fighters, you know what I'm saying, in some shape, form, or fashion, and we speak the truth early and often as possible. But last night, you know what I'm saying, salute to Shakur Stevenson for actually becoming the three-division world champion, right? He fought for Devin Haney's vacant belt. 
you know what I'm saying? I often say I'm, I don't get into the politics behind how that actually came into play. But we arrived at a fight last night, a highly anticipated fight last night between Shakur Stevenson and Edwin De La Santo. Now, it was a lackluster, boring, very boring fight. You know what I'm saying? Shakur said, don't even congratulate me. I know I won, but I don't need the kudos and all this. That's how it was. That's, that's his words. I salute him for actually being able to get the job done. My hopes and one of my pushes was because I wanted to see. I had got off of the Devin and Tank thing because Devin went to 140. That's where he's going to be. He can no longer use Tank name for clout. You know what I'm saying? To try to build up whatever he got going on. You know what I'm saying? So it was all eyes on Shakur. And I'm not sure with that performance last night. I don't think if I was a gambling or a bad man, I would say that didn't get us any closer to a Tank and Shakur fight. You know what I'm saying? The more and more I think about it, I think that it's going to be one of these boxers, these up and coming boxers, who not just out for money, who not just out for a belt, but out to push their family name. You know what I'm saying? Out to push their family name, to put their family name on the map or to prove that they are legit. That's going to be Tank's biggest opposition. I digress. Last night, Shakur Stevenson secured that belt. It was very, very hard. I, I could have went with a draw on that fight. I could have went with a draw in that fight because in the scoring criteria and blah, 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 I'm not going to get into all of that. I actually scored the fight and I had it 116-112 just like the other judges. But I do know that some of them rounds could have been swing rounds because nothing was really going on. Long story short, Shakur Stevenson ends up with the victory. Now, here comes Tim Bradley. Here comes Bob Arum. Here come all these people making all these excuses but i want to point out something with tim because his commentary in that fight last night was atrocious it was atrocious i know that like it was a it was it was months before andre ward leave i seen andre ward he couldn't play the game no more andre ward started speaking more and more truth and the more it became enjoyable because at one point in time where i didn't like hearing ward and bradley at all and I actually have a lot of respect for Andre. Well, I still got respect for Tim Bradley, but the commentary sucked, man. This one-sided commentary, man, when you just, you know, everything Shakur do. Come on, man. We watching boxing, man. Some of us been watching for a long time. And we know what we're seeing. But that was atrocious. But let's fast forward past the, when the results came out. Tim Bradley was one of the main ones campaigning. Oh, man. Even in the fight. Oh, man. We, we know the left. The this, this, and that. You know what I'm saying? Gary Russell didn't get that excuse, and Gary Russell actually beat Mark Maxayo with that bad shoulder, and it was his lead hand as a southpaw. He won that fight. Tank Davis with a bad hand, he actually won that fight against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Everybody come down on Jamal Charlo about that fight with Montiel, and when Jamal Charlo came out, he actually showed his hand. He showed his hand. It was like it looked like a it looked like it had a grapefruit in the middle of it. Nobody said nothing. But here we got Tim Bradley out here talking about how he was hurt and you can tell and making all these excuses. Well, guess what? Guess who won last night? Earl Smith Jr. Yes. He's been vindicated. Everybody know that that wasn't Earl, but Earl is a different species, man. That's why he'll forever have my support in whatever he do. You know what I'm saying? As long as it's not criminal, he got my support, man, because we need people and fighters with the spirit of Earl Spence. Earl Spence, we knew something was wrong with him, but he said no excuses. And I believe he probably gave an order out to his camp, like Derrick James and all them. They all gonna say, hey, ain't no excuses. So, just as early, so because Tim Bradley comes out and he says whatever he says about, you know, Shakur being hurt and, you know, we thought it, he was saying it was a hand. Bob Aram come out saying it was a numerous ailments and it was really a shoulder. Regardless, how are you up here campaigning and waving the flag to legitimize the performance? When Shakur himself said he, he didn't perform as well as he needed to. So in essence, he spanked his own self. He chastised his own self. He got a, he got a dose of humble pie his own self, and he took it like a champ. He handled it pretty well. He was pretty truthful about everything. But this is what I, this is what I don't like about the sport of boxing, because depending on how large of a voice you have, or depending on how... You know what I'm saying? What, what your status is as far as a boxer, you just get to say whatever you want. And people are going to run with it. Like, oh, man, Hall of Fame, man. You know he was in the Hall of Fame. He got, that don't mean that it's right. 
So like Earl Spence said, we need to keep that same energy. We knew something was wrong with Earl. So everybody out here talking about, oh man, nah man. That was just, man, y'all trying to take credit away from Bud. Y'all trying to take, now, Shakur Stevenson won that fight. But let's not get on these coattails talking about uh, and trying to get out there and just over embellish and just keep reiterating the same thing about how Shakur was hurt. Because if that's the case, if something was wrong and that's legitimized, then let's lay up off of Earl Spence. Let's stop all that chitter chatter, booty chatter, whatever you got going on about Spence and the performance that he put on against Bud. We don't take away from Bud's experience, but as true Spence fans, so we can be objective. Spence fans can be. We can say, regardless, Bud did what he was supposed to do, but when we look at Spence, it was something wrong. But if we don't get the privilege of being able to say that it was something wrong with Earl Spence, because I see people coming out saying that now, if we don't get the privilege of doing that, let's not create a trend to where, because it's a top-ranked fighter or somebody that you vouch for, that you get to wave this flag and say, oh, man, you can tell, you know, because of the pedigree and all this. Like, let's stop it, man. Let's keep the same energy for everybody. I'm not going to spell it out for you, man. Let's just stop, man. Let's just get back to calling boxing straight down the middle. What your eyeballs are seeing is what we need to hear. And the standard for all these champions, whether it's an excuse to be made, because people didn't like Regis when he said, oh, man, it was a home fight. Had a lot going on, had a bad performance, and he wound up, they had a, a total punches landed of 84. They set a record. I don't know what kind of record this was we saw last night. I think I, I, 40 landed punches, no round with nobody landed double digit, double digit punches. And I was talking to my old head today. He said, man, he said, I can't even count how many times somebody got hit flush in the face. So on one side, we got Shakur Stevenson only fans, the ones who only like, just like we have Bud only fan, Canelo only fan, Devin only fan, like the ones that only like them. You had them saying, oh man, it's the sport of hit and not get hit. It's like, no, I think, and in this instance, I think sometimes when they come against somebody with some kind of power, I think that Shakur got things transposed. His mentality is not get hit and hit. It's not hit and not get hit. If it was hit and not get hit, that means you would go ahead and hit your target. Now I'm up. So now all I got to do is evade. Hit and not. So that means pretty much I got just got to keep putting balls in a hole. You know what I'm saying? I just got to keep putting points on the board. And, and, and not allow people to get points on me. That's really what it is. But I think that this mentality of... Not get hit, so I'm uh, so I'm a, I'm gonna I'm avoid trying to get you, you know what I'm saying? Every now and again, when I can, I'm gonna get mine off. Like, no, it's backwards, it's the sweet science of hit and not get hit, not not get hit and hit. Let that sink in. But, like, man, I, I look up to people like Tim Bradley, man, especially being in the position that he is, and we do it in a, in a world where, man, it's a lot of casual people watching boxing, so. Your commentary can dissuade people. The fact that you're in the Hall of Fame, it can dissuade people. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying you can't be a company man, but golly. But if 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 Shakur Stevenson, who I am a fan of, you know what I'm saying? I have my fair share of criticisms as well. I just don't berate the young man. I actually try to highlight the good, just like I do with all these boxes. I try to put some fresh water back in it. But if Tim Bradley... He be honest with himself and the fans, man. It's not right to be able to make an excuse for Shakur in that performance. Shakur didn't make an excuse. That's just like Errol Spence fans. Errol Spence fans can't make an excuse for Errol Spence because Errol Spence didn't make any excuse. We know something was wrong with him, but it can't be a double standard. And if so, then you've been exposed. What do you think? Let me know right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? How are you calling this? Are you calling this right down the middle? Or is it like, oh, no. If the, you know what I'm saying? If the wind is going this way and the sun is shining and it's the star in the east. Like, no. The standard should be the standard should be the standard. Whenever we're talking about boxing, watching boxing, scoring boxing, commentating on boxing, judging the sport of boxing and all these standards around it. It shouldn't be, oh, because I'm with this people and this, I act like this. And because I'm with this, I act like that. Like, no. 
That's what's wrong with boxing today, man. And I'm a solution-oriented individual. Put some solutions in the, in the comments. Let me know what you think about Tim. Is this maximum exposure? And this is for my critical thinkers here. I want to know. You see how I engage with you on there, man. If you want, you can send a super chat. If you want, you can hit the cash app if you want. But at least like, comment, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Update your notifications. Let's talk about this. Let's let's develop this conversation so we can start actually trying to fix the sport of boxing. Anyways, thanks for tuning in here at Body Work Boxing. Where we don't take things for face value. We do that body work. Welcome to 